Hello, my clay friends. Today we are gonna make a mug. So we are gonna start with a 1.2 pound ball of clay, throw it into a mug. We're gonna trim the bottom and boom, we're gonna attach a handle right on there. So it looks just like that. Well, a lot better than that. Let's get to it. So we're gonna first just put, I, I like throwing on the wheel head for these sort of things. Cause um, you know, I just, the way I learned was I, I didn't start with bat. So whenever I can, I don't throw with a bat on the wheel. So let's center up this small piece of clay. So I'm pushing it down to make sure it's stuck. And then I'm bracing myself. I'm getting into a good solid position. I'm gonna squeeze down from both sides. I like using this technique where I'm squeezing my hands from both sides kind of equally. I try to keep my wrist kind of straight because I, I don't wanna do that. It hurts my wrist for some reason. So when I throw, I just try to squeeze from both sides equally like that. And then I hold still and I'm relying on my core muscles down in my core here, up and down to help hold still like that. So I'm trying to use as much of my body to center as possible, right? I know there are lots of different ways to do it, but that's the way I center. I squeeze from the sides like this and I go up and then back down. So I cone up and go back down. I'm going to do that a couple of times. Hopefully your clay is wedged up really well. For these smaller pieces of clay, you can have a fairly fast wheel speed for centering. That's okay. The rule is the smaller the piece of clay, the faster the wheel speed rotation can be. The slower your wheel speed, I mean the bigger your piece of clay, the slower your wheel speed should be. Because, And then we'll do some videos about throwing bigger pieces of clay at a later date. So I'm going up and down a few times. This clay has been sitting out for, a couple, for about an hour or two, so it's having some issues with not being exactly um, ready to go. There we go, so I got it. So for this cylinder, I want this mound to be a little wider because this type of cup I want to be a little wider. So remember that the cylinder that you make or this mound, the center mound that you make determines what kind of cylinder you can make. So if I leave it like this and just open, I can only get a really narrow cylinder. But So I'm gonna spread this clay out a little by pushing down and making the mound wider. There we go. Now I'm going to open it up. So that seems about right. It could actually, no, I'm okay with that. We're going to go with that. And now I'm going to op do my opening. So I'll bring you guys in a little closer for that. So we're going to get ready to do my opening. So I push down here in the middle. Do my opening and going down there. So I established my base. So then let's widen this guy out. So I'm going to wet this down a little bit. And then let's poke in and let's just see how thick that is before we get too excited. Right? So it's about that thick. So I'm eyeballing my, my, pin, my pinky th thickness. So I'm gonna go down just a little bit and then just start pulling back and widening. So as I'm pulling back, I wanna make sure that this looks kind of flat in there, right? That I'm not leaving a mound or something in there because I want a nice flat bottom as it comes across here. So let's wet this down a little bit. So I'm just gonna pull straight back and make that guy wider. There we go. So there we go. So that's the width of my cylinder. Right now is the time I'm going to come back in here and flatten out the bottom. Just take care of business. So here we go. Flatten out the bottom there. Now I'm going to get ready to raise my walls. So let's pull you guys back a little bit so you can see more. So now I'm going to wet the inside and outside. I'm going to push from the outside, push in for the inside. So my hand position is like this. This one's pushing out. This one's cup pushing in like that and I'm going to raise up so the inside hand is higher while I raise so there we go so you can see that that that's looking pretty straight up and down so that's what I want I want a cylinder that's straight up and down that's even from top to bottom if you have more thickness at the bottom down here then what you would want to do is you would next time you raise you want to pull harder or push harder down here squeeze harder at the bottom to try to thin that out right and then the places where your cylinder is thinner then you would want to maybe not push as hard when you get to those places all right so i'm going to try to make this cylinder a little taller by thinning out by thinning it out so i'm going to push and push from inside and outside and raise up there we go so i just made it taller so what am i doing there let's take a quick peek at what that is 
So as I'm raising, I have this guy right here. So what am I doing? I am taking my thing and I'm raising, right? I'm going up together like this. And you can see that my inside hand is a little bit higher than my outside hand. That's partially because the inside hand is has the base, right? So that it starts lower and this one starts at the wheel head and they squeeze together and they start going up. And you can see that the clay then needs to come down and do this like S curve. And they're pushing kind of diagonally. This one's pushing out, this one's kind of pushing up like that, you see that? And then that helps raise and thin out the clay. I know when you're throwing and you don't, and you don't, haven't been top throwing and you just look at it on TV, it looks like people's hands are either side, but the outside hand is lower, pushing up a little bit. The inside hand is pushing out, okay? So let's, let's do a little bit, let's raise again here. And then, and then we'll be ready to do some shaping. So let's wet the whole cylinder down. And let's do another raise. So push from the bottom like that. And I'll do my raise up. Now you usually get about three good raises out of a out of a piece of clay, right? So this whole time, what I'm trying to make sure is trying to make sure that the clay is even from top to bottom. So let's take a look on the inside. I think my inside is just a little bit thicker. I mean, the bottom is just a little bit thicker than the top. So I'm going to do one more raise out of this. I'm going to push the inside. I'm going to push the bottom a little bit harder to see if I can grab some of that clay out of the bottom. So this is getting pretty tall. So I'm going to use my sponge this time and wet it from inside all the way down to the bottom. All right. So now we'll do the, we'll do the raising pass again. So here we'll just raise, push. So I'm going to push a little harder down here because I think there's some extra clay down here that I'm leaving behind. There we go. I feel it raising. I don't need to push too much. So now right about here, it's about thin enough. So I'm relaxing my pressure as I go up. And then here, I know it's definitely thin enough. So I'm really relaxing my pressure. Ooh, I'm getting quite a cylinder out of this piece of clay. So now for me, what I was planning that this is just more cylinder than I was actually planning on for. But we can make this work, right? So the cylinder is a little bit taller, a little bit narrower than what I wanted originally. But let's let's we can work with this. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna clean up the inside, right? I'm gonna start with the inside and clean up that that part. So I have a sponge on a stick, which I'm which is missing right now. And it's right here. It's all just covered with clay. So this is a special kind of stick, right? It has a kind of a spongy thing here on the end that can absorb water. And then you can just tie a sponge right onto the end of a stick and that will work. So I squeeze out all the water out of this and then I just drop it in and sponge out the inside, right? And this will also, if the, if the bottom is kind of beat up and marked up, that will clean up the bottom. I use some pressure here, clean that up. And now, so the bottom inside is uh, clean of water and it is smooth so now i'm going to rib the inside and outside i just grab two ribs like this and then what i'm going to do is run these ribs up and inside parallel to each other inside and out and run them from bottom to top right and i always do bottom to top because that just seems to work the best right for me i know some people i think there are other ways that people do it but i like going bottom to top so here like this and i go from all the way down to the bottom I can. My hand's kind of too big to reach in there right now really good because the cylinder ended up just a little bit narrower than what I usually would do there. So that was number one. I got that much clay off, right? And then I'll scrape that into my water bucket and then I'll just do it one more time. So you see how much smoother that is? So why am I doing this? Well, this scrapes off all the water and all the slip. So that stuff wasn't really doing anything to help the cylinder stand up. And it also smooths the clay out. So now that clay has all the liquid stuff removed off the surface, right? And I've removed all the throwing lines off the surface as well. So I have a kind of a blank cylinder. So I'm ready to go. So now I need to think about the form that I want to make. So let's just bring over another, the pot that I kind of my modeling after. So here's my pot that I'm kind of modeling, right? So I want to make something kind of like this. And so I can kind of push this out into that, into this shape. So 
what am I gonna do? So it's kind of a barrel shape here. It's kind of symmetrical, meaning it goes in, it comes out, there's like a wide point here and it comes back in. And there's kind of like this neck thing going on here. So I want something like this. So let's try that. So from here to here, so this will be my wide point right there. I'm just gonna put a line, little mark right there. Let's just use, um, and the needle tool will put a mark there. So this here, this will be the wide point right here. So I'm always planning out what I wanna do. So that's my wide point there. That's where the break is for the neck, right? And that will be the narrow, somewhere in there will be the narrow point. So I, as far as my cylinder goes, that's what I'm gonna get. Wide, the turn back in, right? Shoulder, neck. And then, of course, rim. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to push this guy out right here. From here on down, gets pushed out into this barrel shape. This part's going to maybe stay about the same width, and then this part will flare out a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do with my cylinder. This, cil this, this cylinder can transform into this. Let's do it. Okay. So for this, I can't really get my hand in there. If you look, my hand kind of is just too big to really fit in there. And it's just because I kind of have wide hands. So I am going to use something like this. So instead of using my regular throwing stick today, let's just use a spoon, okay? Because everyone has one of these lying around. So here, I'm going to also clean off this kind of extra uh, amount of clay down here. Just clean this part off because this makes it easier for me to shape it. It's also easier for me to see the form, and that's just clay I'd have to trim off again later anyway. So let's trim this part off. There we go. There. So that just cleans up my form. I could undercut it, but I'll undercut it later at the end. All right. so now I'm going to erase those marks that I put on there because I don't really need them, and those will mess up my... So I'm going to erase up the little marks I put on the outside. Just There we go. So there. So oop, I put another mark on there. Let me do that again. There we go. So marks erased. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, oop, marks not quite erased. Let's just, there. So now let's just start pushing this out. So I'm going to use this because my spoon, because I can reach in there with the spoon and push it out. So let's do it this way so we can see both views at the same time. So now what I'm going to do is reach the spoon in. I'm going to use this part of this curve to push out right here. So I'm not going to push out right here. I'm going to push out stuff from below. But out there is going to be the wide point, right? So I'll use this. I'll start using this spoon and start pushing out. Oop, it's grabbing a little bit at the bottom. There we go. Push out. So I'm looking in as I do this, right? Push, 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 push. There we go. Push, 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 push. So I'm starting to make that shape. So I'm mostly concerned with this shape down here, trying to get this shape right, and then I'll work on this other shape up here in a second. There we go. Push, 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 push. There we go. So I'm going to now spend some time pushing this area out way down here at the bottom, get that to look right. There we go. Look at that. Nice. There. Slowly pushing out. So you notice I'm not using any water. I am not using um, any, um, not touching the outside. It's just one of the ways I learned how to throw. It's called stretching. So you only really get to touch the outside for most of this. So you see how that actually would make a pretty good cup, but let's just push it out wider. So little changes in the form mean a lot, can mean a lot of change for the way how the form looks, the way how the form feels. So let's just keep pushing it out a little bit more. There we go. So I just want a more like robust piece of pottery down there, right? Ooh, look at how chubby that guy's getting, right? So you can think about that. Look, at it just has some weight and some oomph to it now down there. I love it. So now I'm going to, I think that that curve is looking really good. I'm going to go back and push this part out a little bit more. There we go. So it's looking like I'm getting a slightly different pot, right? Than what I was, than what I had before. And this is another type of shape that I make a lot of. There we go. Look at that. That's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So now I'm going to work on this part up here just to clean up this, just to make this transition and all this looking good. Put a flare maybe here like that, like that. Change that flare, right? I'm stretching it out a little, 
right there we go so maybe what i want to do is i'm going to push this area up now that i'm looking at let's just change the form a little bit more and you can see that as it changes the cup changes how we feel about the cup right it's kind of attitude the energy so you see how i just push that part back in you see how now that's a different cup let's do this let's push this area in let's just see how that looks right so as these little things happen right this is changes how people feel about the cup. It also changes like how much the cup will hold. Um, if it's easy to use, is it hard to drink out of? Things like that. There you go. Look at that curve. So I put a different curve on there. So now this is like one continuous curve, right? And flips back up. Let's just go with that today. Let's just push this area back in, right? And so your cups kind of say a lot about you, right? So deciding how you want that cup to look is very important. So you see how that's a, now a much different cup from the way it was before. So let's fix up the rim. So the rim's looking pretty flat, but let's cut off the rim anyways, just to show you guys. So I hold this guy like a pencil. And then what I'm gonna do is bring this, let's bring this up close here. So I'm just gonna hold this like a pencil like that. And then I'm slowly gonna use the tip of this to slowly cut into the rim until I'm cut all the way across like that. You see that I'm bracing both hands together, right hand pushing up against my left thumb, right? And I hold my left finger, my left uh, middle finger on the inside, and this helps hold me steady. And then I slowly, very slowly push my needle tool until it comes out the other side. So here, this is the way it looks when there's no clay in the way. So I slowly, 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 slowly push through to the other side while the wheel is spinning. All right. So now let's fix up the rim because it's now all dry. So I'll wet the rim down really fast. And then, oop, I was being too aggressive on my wetting. And then let's see here, I'll find my chamois, which always disappears right there. I wet my chamois down. And then I'm just gonna wrap this around the rim to round it. I always like a nice, beautiful round rim because that just helps and keeps that a nice happy and safe place for people to drink out of if you think about it like people are going to be putting this rim in their mouth and that's a very intimate place your mouth so you think about it like if there's if you just look around the studio and just pick up random things right would you put this in your mouth no would you put this in your mouth no would you put like even like this in your mouth. No, I wouldn't, but we stick the rim of a mug in our mouth without even thinking about it, right? So this is a very soft and intimate place, your mouth. So when you do your rims, you wanna make sure that your rims are all soft, nice and round and happy like that. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that form. Let's cut it off and let's trim. Let's trim the other one that I already have for you, and then we'll attach a handle. So I'm gonna undercut this just a little bit, not too much, right? And then I'll just bring it off the wheel. So I said that I don't like um, throwing on bats when I make these because I can easily lift these off without deforming them. So let me cut this off, and then we'll bring the my other bat with the other pot on there already over, and let's put this in a way so you can see it all. So here, there's my pot. I'm gonna bring this bat over. The reason why I don't like throwing these on bats is because I can take this pot and I'd wanna dry my hands off, right? Get the kind of stuff off of them, right? Get all goopy and crummies off. And then, so if I have kind of dryish, cleanish hands, I can just hold, just touch the surface. And I want as much skin contact on, with both of my hands as possible. And I just lightly touch the surface and then I can lift it off and put it over there. So yay, so it lives with the other one I made. And then I'll pick these away. All right, so let's trim this one here. So we're gonna trim this guy here and then we're gonna attach a handle. So let's clean this wheel off. So just talking about the way I normally work, I normally wouldn't work one at a time. I would definitely work a bunch at a time all at the same time. So here we go. Let's do this. Let's get this oriented in a slightly better way. There we go. So I'm gonna tap center this guy. So here we go. So tap centering. So just to get it on the middle. So now we're gonna trim this guy. Let's put some clay down and hold it in place.
right, so this guy, right, cups are kind of tall, right? So I, I use pretty big blobs, right, like this that will help hold it in place because I don't want it jumping away. So I don't use, with bowls, I can use pretty flat blobs, but when I use these guys, I use pretty more taller blobs that are not as wide. Right. And sometimes what I'll even do is kind of wedge them up like this. So they kind of ride up the side of the cup. You see that? So instead of doing a wide, long blob, and I will bend it in a curve like that. So it's kind of curved. So it'll fit to the side of the cup like that and then push it down. But you see how high that blob rides. And these little blobs, this clay is a little bit harder than bag clay because the stiffer this clay as long as i can roll it up it still works right and so i'm going to make this blob a little higher and put it on this side so this will help hold it down a little bit better than a normal blob a flat blob or a super wet clay so now let's just trim this guy up so oh let's talk about where the foot's going to be so this had a flat bottom on the inside and it comes up along the side so normally i kind of like to put the feet opposite where the flat bottom is so that's where i'm going to try to locate this foot this has a pretty wide bottom so i'm going to try to probably locate that foot pretty wide so let's just draw a picture of where i think that would be so probably right about there maybe a little wider let's go a little wider let's go there right there or there because this is a pretty big beefy cup so let's put a pretty wide foot on this one there right and then i'm going to trim this i'm going to trim this part away leave this part and then trim this part away. And that's where my foot will be. All right, so let's do it. So I always start with the sure form. So here, this time we'll use this sure form. And that just allows me to knock this corner part off really efficiently. So this is a different one here and that I used from my other videos. And you see that it's like a cheese grater, it works great. Trim, trim, trimmy, trim, trim, trimmy, trim, trim, trimmy, trim, trim. There we go. So you see how it's kind of knocking that edge off. There we go. And then so as I get closer to that line, right, I got to stop before I get to that line where the outside of my foot's going to be. There we go. Look at that. Woohoo! Like spaghetti. Like clay spaghetti. So I'm there. And I'm there. So I'm there. So that's about as much as this trimming tool can do. All right, so I have a choice here, right? I can trim a continuous curve into that foot or I can create a break in the curve. So what I mean by a break in the curve where this will just have a flat edge and then the curve will start. And I'll show you, that's what we'll trim today, right? My Most of the time I trim pretty a smooth curve coming around, but today let's have a curve, 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 and then there'll be a break and it'll run in and it'll start the base. So that's what we'll do. So I'll use this trimming tool here and I'll start the good thing about these square trimming tools is it allows me to trim the foot and this trim the outside of the foot and this part the edge of the pot at the same time because it has a square corner and both these edges are sharp this vertical edge and that horizontal edge are both sharp so it allows me to trim vertically and horizontal surfaces at the same time absolutely absolutely a great tool I love this tool so you see how I'm able to get that outside of that foot already started there. And then how far down do I want to go? I don't know, right? So that's looking pretty good, right? That's looking like a chunky enough foot. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this flat shelf off a little bit. So here, I'm just going to roll this tool down a little bit and trim it from that angle a little bit. There we go. There. So trim that. There we go. Look at that. So there. So I said I was going to create a break in the curve. What did I mean by that? Well, instead of just rounding this curve off like I did here, right? This one just has a round curve that comes around and then goes flat, 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 and just kind of rounds back up. So the whole side is like a nice rounded curve. This one, I think I'm going to leave curve, 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 and there'll be a break, right? A change in direction of the curve. It'll go flat there. And so I'll have this interesting like um, line here, right? Where the curve changes. So let's just do that. Let's just leave it. I like that for this one, right? So I'm just going to keep this flat here and trim this a little bit more. Right, using this flat edge of this tool trim. And then I'm going to trim up this part right here because that part needs just a little bit of trimming just to clean it up. Right, So you see that I don't trim too much of clay. Like there shouldn't, for me in the way I throw, that this edge is already looking okay when it comes off the wheel. I just need to trim off a little. It's mainly the bottom that I'm trimming. All right, so now 
I'm going to trim the this inside of this foot right now. If I can find my trimming tools. Here we go. So we're going to use this trimming tool. I'm going to trim the inside of this foot. So let's, there we go. Right, so I'll trim the inside here. And I can use these big trimming tools. I'm just going to use the little end, right? So I can flip it over and do it lefty like this. So then this little tool acts like a little trimming tool. Even though it's a big trimming tool, I'm going to use just the sharp end. I learned this in undergrad because people were always using these tools and we had a very small amount of sharp tools in the studio because we all shared. This part was always dull, right? Because people always use these tools flat, but the smaller tool loot tools were always dull too because people use those all the time. But I realized that this little part was always sharp because no one used the tool like this. So I started, that's how I started learning how to use, I flipped the tool on end to start using the tool like this. There, so I got that pretty well started, right? And, but I want to trim this, this edge down to the same level as that edge there. So I need to find my other trimming tool, if I can find it. My other trimming tool is gone. Oh, there it is. So here's my other trimming tool. So now I'm going to trim right here and just start trimming this away. Once I start this, the the inside I with the other tool, I can come back in with this tool. I just don't like starting the inside with this tool. It just doesn't work very well for me. There we go. So see, I want this edge to come across and line up with the same depth as this. So let's take a look here. Right, so let's take a look from the side there. It's looking pretty close, right? I think what I need to do is I think I just need to do a little bit more trimming on this outside edge. But here's my other example. So how this edge comes around and then is at the same depth as the inner foot. That's what I want here. Same depth, same depth as it comes across. So I'm going to trim out just a little bit more from that part right there. And then I'll round the foot and we'll talk about that in a second. So here we go. So I think I'm there. I think I'm at the same depth across here to here. It's a little bit high here, so we'll trim that inside out, that very center a little bit, just to get rid of that. There we go. All right, so that's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to round the foot. So I like round feet because round feet to me are stronger. So you see how this foot is rounded across the base here. You see that? So it's rounded on this side and that's around. So it's kind of like almost like a semicircle there, right? So that's what I like because that edge is much stronger. So when that edge bangs against countertops and things, when they set the cup down, that round edge really takes the shock of being set down really aggressively much, um, much better than a sharp corner. Right? So if this corner here was just left, that corner would chip off right away. If, just to, if I were to leave it. I'm going to actually thin this foot up some because it seems a little wide. Like the thickness here seems a little wide. I'm going to actually push this part in just a little bit too. There we go. That seems better. So the one of the things that I think about is that the reason why I like this round is that it makes it like a rim. Right, so just like how I finished the rim and made the rims smooth, this is the other end. This is the other side that gets finished, right? So it's kind of like bookending to me, right? So where you start and finish with the same thing. Right, I think I learned that, and that's like a movie term, or they use those in TV shows where you start the TV show and end the TV show or movie in the same way. There we go. So that's rounded. So then I could just take my rib because this clay is soft enough today that I could take my rib and just round that foot because I love the, this polished foot when it's rounded like that. All right. So now we are ready to stick on a handle. So let me get my handle out. Let's take this off. That's looking really good and nice. And it should be a little bit lighter. Ooh, that feels really good. So let me get my board out and then let's stick on a handle. So. Here's my board. Let's back that off so we have a good view of what's going on. Let's get my banding wheel. Banding wheel so I can move it around super easy. And then let's get my pot. We'll set this pot down like this. 
And let's put a handle on. So I have already these handles on. Right now I'm experimenting with these extruded handles. So that's what we're gonna put on. So I have my magic box of extruded handles. So what I've been doing is I have a couple of these boxes. I have a piece of hardy backer board inside that it's really soaked in water. And the hardy backer board retains water and will absorb lots of water and slowly just keep this area, this box wet, keep it at basically 100% humidity. So these handles are probably made about a month ago and they still are bendable and they're still in really good shape. So what I do is I extrude out these handles using a handheld extruder and I extrude enough to just fill these boxes up and then I only have to extrude once and then I have like a 50 handles ready to go. So we got one handle out and then now let's Get ready to attach it. I'm gonna dunk this in water because it's just a touch dry and then we'll sit there and it sit there. So where do I attach the handle? So if you have any sort of flaw on your pot, that's where you attach the handle. Or if your pot isn't round, right, you would attach it probably in one of the non-round directions. But so let's just pretend that I had dropped this and there's like a big squiggly mark like that on there. Well, that's the place I'm gonna put the handle because the handle will go boop and cover that up. So that's what we'll do with this one. We're gonna cover up the, the we're gonna cover up my random mark there, but let's clean my mark up really fast as much as we can, because we don't want too big a mark on there, right? There we go, there. So that mark is mostly cleaned off, right? Now we're gonna attach a handle. So first of all, I love it when handles for me go back up, come up, and then back down. That's not quite right, so let's monkey around with bending this guy around. So let's bend it up a little bit. Let's make that a little tighter like that as we bend it around. Let's see if we can make this look good, right? There we go, like that. So there, so that's coming up and back down. Ooh, that's still too big, but we're getting closer, right? So let's choke that in a bunch, right? Get this curve a lot tighter. Ooh, that's looking better. All right, so that will probably look okay once I attach it, right? So another way you can do this is you can actually hold the handle behind, right? And you can cut off part of the handle with the edge of the pot, and then you can see it, how it would look. Ooh, that would look good. I'm excited about that. I think that would look awesome. Right, so I just need to cut off this handle where the pot is cutting off the handle visually, right? So that's what I'll do. Let's do this. So, oh, the other thing I like that I'm doing is I'm using this piece of corrugated foam because I used to use flat foam and I'd have my pots like roll off. So I'd use corrugated foam now so that the pot will rest in there and it doesn't want to roll off, right? So I'm gonna kind of eyeball this and get my knife out. And we are going to cut this off at the right angle. So let me just eyeball this again about what angle it needs to be. About there. So I kind of guesstimated the angle that I need to cut it off at right there. And then I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to dip my handle in water because it helps it cut just a little bit better. There we go. Ooh. There we go. So that looks like that looks pretty good right there. Bam. Right, right there. That looks like it's going to come off, come out pretty good, coming sweeping up out of that space. Now I'm going to try to bend this guy around so it's bent around into about the right shape that I need. Ooh, that's looking just about right. So I'm also going to take this. So since this edge is flat and this edge is round, right round in this direction, you see that? So you see that how I'm going to take this handle and moosh it up against another round object here. So I'm just going to, this is just a round, something round. Sometimes I just push it against the cylinder and that will help round it off. I can also just hold it here and just hit it with my finger to kind of dent this side, the center part in a little bit. If your clay is soft enough, you can do that. Right there. And so I just, I kind of did a too good a job cleaning it. So here, so there, now what I want is ideally is for this whole face here, right? To make contact with this whole face here, wherever it's touching. So let's take a qu quick look at that. Is it doing that? Ooh, it's pretty good, right? You see that's fitting pretty good. It's a little bit proud still down here. I can feel it. So let me tap that area in a little bit more. I just didn't do that enough right there in the middle. So I'm just denting the clay back a little. Let's see now. Ooh, much better the way it fits. Ooh. So ideally I would love it if this whole face here 
came in contact with this whole face all at the same time. That's good. So now I'm just gonna wet this handle face down. I just dipped my finger in water. So I'm gonna wet that face down. And then I'm just gonna stamp this against the side here. So here, I'm gonna take this and smoosh that up against the side just for a split second. And then it leaves a wet mark there. And that's the area that I need to score and then put slip on. So here, I gotta quickly score because it, it quickly starts disappearing. So I'm gonna score that up with my fancy homemade scoring tool. There we go. There, so scored. And then I'm gonna add my attaching slip here. So this is just some slip that I added. We'll, we'll make a video layer about how to make this. And I just gob this stuff on here, right? And so this is really good stuff. I keep a jar of it lying around and then I'm gonna score this side and gob it on. There, and then gob it on, goober goober. Goober all this. So I really like to over goober. Like I'm okay with doubling goobering up this because it will squish out and I can, it's really easy to clean up later. So here, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push it on and I'm gonna wiggle it very, um, wiggle it back and forth in place. So I push it on and then I go ee, 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 ee. See that? Ee, 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 ee. That's the pot making that sound. There we go. So it is wiggled in place and I really over goober that. Okay, so now I got to fix the shape of the handle, right? So I'm going to kind of, it's it's kind of gotten kind of sad and kind of droopy. So I'm going to actually just push this end up a little to make it look a little bit happier. And oh, look at that. So much better. So much happier. Yay. So I pushed it down too hard. Let me push that side back down. There we go. So now I'm ready to cut this guy off. So attach this side, it's looking okay. I'm pretty happy with the way it's looking. I'm gonna clean this area up a little bit just with my finger, just to clean up all that extra gooey slip that came out. I will clean that top bar part off in a second. So I'm gonna set this guy down here and I'm just gonna now make, a, make the cuts here to attach this bottom part. So here, what I'm gonna do is take this guy here and I'm gonna cut this way off this end. Because if you look, this end isn't quite that pretty. So I would like it to attach much better. So I'm gonna trim that end off so it looks a little bit neater. Okay, so I'll take this needle, this knife and just cut it this way, right? Kind of rock it back and forth till it cuts through. And that makes this end much nicer for this attachment, right? You see that? So that's a much nicer, they're gonna be a much nicer attachment. And now what I'm gonna do is just kind of take it here and then dry while it's dry, just kind of dry fit it down a little bit, right? You see that? So I'm just kind of pushing it down into place a little bit. So while it's dry and then what I'm gonna do, so now it's kind of form fitting to that place there. And now what I can do is add my slip and attach it on. All right, so I add my stuff. I don't bother scoring the surface or anything. I just add my slip and then put it on. So I wanna make sure when I attach this that this handle here is directly below, above each other, right? I don't wanna attach this guy off to the side, off to the side. I wanna attach it right on, right on below where it should be. So here, and then I do the squiggle again. Let me make sure it's right below because I haven't got a good look at it yet. Okay, so then I just do the squiggle again, right in place, e -e 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 -e, right? So I'm wiggling it back and forth. E -e 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 -e. There. So now it's wiggled back and forth in place. That is attached really good. So now I will go around and I take a, uh, a dry brush. So I take a dry brush and I will just go around and clean up these extra beads of stuff. And this helps clean it up. I really goober it in. So usually I don't goober in that much stuff, right? This is really over goobered. I'm much more little bit restraint is better there. Over goober. Too excited about my goober. All right, there we go. So that's looking good. So this is a different color slip because I have some I have some stuff in there that kind of molds a little bit. It doesn't it isn't stinky. It just turns black a little bit. It turns darker as it ferments, I guess, in there. So then I just come back through and I just do a quick cleanup. So we have all that. 
clean that up, clean up my handles. There we go. Look at that. So then this handle got kind of beat up because it's been around for a while. So I'm just going to clean up the whole thing, make it look pretty and happy and gorgeous and awesome. And like, this is the best handle ever, ever made in the whole world. Right. So now I'll do a quick kind of um, form check. It's looking pretty good. Right. I'm going to squash that down just a little bit more there and that's looking pretty good all right last step is i'm going to put my chop on there which i have lost all right so normally my chop would go right there but i've misplaced it it'll turn up all right everyone thank you for watching um thank you